Statistics and Excel. Uniform distributions with dice. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts. A must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six-pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know. That CPA six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. You know, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. And, and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four, so I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below, we've got the example, practice blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can get right to the heart of the practice problem, blank tab, blank worksheet, so we can practice formatting the cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's look at the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going as we think about a uniform type distribution using an example of rolling a dice. Now note that the die has six sides, six number on the die. If we thought about rolling the dice an infinite amount of times, which we can imagine to be the entire population, an infinite amount of rolls, we would expect basically a uniform type of distribution. Then we can imagine, well, what if we rolled it a finite amount of times and plotted out the distributions of a finite amount of times of rolls, and we can compare that then to uh, the uniform distribution. So that's what we will do. Let's go to the blank tab, and let's first, so we're imagining the dice roll. So remember, there's six sides on the die. So what would be the expected rolls of uh, any number if we were to roll it, let's say, a thousand times. So we're going to say rolls, let's going to say a thousand uh, times. And let's format our cells. Hold on a sec. Let's select the entire worksheet, right click on the cells, and then format them. I'm going to go into the currency, negative numbers bracketed, make them no dollar sign and no decimals and okay i'm also going to make it bold you may not need to but i'm going to work it bold here home tab font group bold so there we have it i'm going to hold down control and scroll in a bit so i'm currently at the 265 percent on the scroll in so i'm going to imagine that we roll it let's roll the die a finite amount of times which is going to be a thousand times as opposed to the population, which would be an infinite amount of times uh, that we can imagine rolling it. And, th and then the outcomes, we're going to imagine any, any one number, the odds on each roll of any one number coming up is going to be equal to one out of six. So there's six numbers on the dice. Let's go ahead and format that number. Uh, let's make it a percent and add some decimals. So six numbers on the dice. Uh, we would expect then a one in six chance on each roll uh, that we, uh, for any one number on the dice. So the expected, let's then say, well, the expected rolls of any number expected rolls of any one number 
then if I roll it 1,000 times and I have uh, any one number, whether that be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, I would expect how many times for that number to come up? Well, if each roll has a 1, 6 chance, it would be 1,000 times that percent. So we'd get uh, 167 about, if I add a couple decimals, home tab, number group, a couple decimals, uh, 166.66 on uh, forever. So that would be what the expected results would be in essence for one number if we rolled it a finite amount of times, a thousand times, we would expect to see uh, 166.66, you know, number ones, twos, threes, and fours. Now note that this expected result is actually impossible to do, right? Because I can't get an outcome that's not gonna be a whole number. So note that we're basically making a model here, a prediction based on, on what we know that we know can't actually happen in real life because I can't get a roll that's going to be not a, a whole number. But the model's still, of course, useful because we can get, you, you know, we can get the expected outcome uh, with the model. So if I then, let's make a skinny C here. And then the headers of our table, I'm going to say these are the dice numbers. And then I'll tab and say these are going to be the expected number of rolls. I'll just say expected rolls and enter. I'm going to format these now by selecting these two up top. We're going to go to the home tab, uh, alignment group, wrap the text, and then alignment group and center the text. I'm going to go to the font group, bucket drop down, make it black, and then the drop down, make it white. All right, so there we have it. And I'm going to say the number of rules is just going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And then we're going to say what are the expected outcomes for each of them. Each of them, if we roll them a thousand times, is going to be, uh, is going to be, one 166.67 is going to be the expected outcome uh, for each of them. So I'll just say this equals this outcome. And let's say F4, that's going to put an absolute value or dollar sign before the B and the three. And then I'll take that and just copy it down and put my cursor in the fill handle, copy that down. There we have it. So the total then that we would expect to have in kind of our perfect world would be equal the sum. And by the way, I'm going to start using uh, some more keystrokes sometimes. You could hit Alt Enter uh, here. Let's do that again. Alt Enter. And then it'll try to sum up what's above it. So notice that keystroke could, you know, be a lot faster oftentimes whenever you're using the sum function. Alt Enter. And so there we have it. And then there, and so there's the thousand rules. That's what we would kind of expect to happen. Let's put an underline here, home tab, font group, and underline it. Let's make this into our kind of format that we've been using. I'm going to select these items, font group, drop down on the bucket. And if you don't have that blue, it's in this. I'm going to make it that blue. That's the blue I like. And then font group, drop down, and all borders. We can also make this one a little bit more skinny so that we can just trim this up. Let's do the same over here as well, making that home tab, font group, blue, and bordered. Okay, so there we have that. Now, if we were to plot this, uh, then I, I, can, I can plot this out and just say, okay, well, if I select these items, these two, and I was going to the insert, and I'm going to use a bar chart to plot this one. So charts, drop down. We're going to make a, a bar chart, which is, which is going to look kind of like a histogram. I'm going to pull this over, right? Because I'm going to say the numbers I want on the bottom. And I'm going to close this up a little bit. And so then I need to adjust the data. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, let's go to the data up top. So I'm in the chart design and then the data. And what I want uh, on this side, uh, which is the which is going to be on the y axis, is just the expected rules. So I don't want this one, or I could I could basically delete this one, delete, and I want the expected rules. And then over here, 
I'd like to make sure that I have my actual labels, not the ones that they're going to make up. So I'm going to copy these items and OK. So there we have it. We're going to say OK. And it's picking up the name of expected rules. I don't re really need the legend over here. I could add the names on the side. I could say these are going to be uh, uh, the data labels, right? I could add data labels and say there's the data labels. And then we could also add uh, access titles if we wanted to. So on the axis titles, this is going to be the, uh, the, the results. So I could say this equals the expected roles. And on this side, I'm selecting it. I'm just going to say this equals the dice numbers, right? So you can format your chart uh, thusly. And notice sometimes now that I have actually my chart information, I might not even need like like uh, th this whole bit right here, right? I might not need this stuff because now I've got the numbers that just basically represent it. So sometimes it might be nice just to unclutter things to actually delete this and then click on these little lines so you get the lines and delete them so that you just get the numbers that are representing them. And that could be a, another format that you can use just as we build our charts. But you get this kind of boring uniform type of distribution. And if we were to write an equation for the uniform uh, formula, it would be something just like f of x equals c. For, so for every x we have, we're going to get, you know, c. So it's a uniform distribution. And note that this is a family of distributions, because it's possible that if we roll the dice, uh, less numbers, like if we if we roll the die only uh, 300 times, then we have a different distribution. It's still a uniform distribution here that is at the 50, right? So then I'm going to say 1000 and bring it back there. Now, of course, in real life, uh, we wouldn't get a uniform distribution because we're, we're using a sample in essence, instead of the entire population of infinite rules, right? We're just doing a thousand rules. So we can simulate, okay, what would actually happen and compare a simulation of rolling the dice. So let's, let's say we, we do a simulation of rolling the dice, uh, rolls, and now we'll actually test this out and see how, and then we can compare to what the expectation is. That's basically what we often do, right? We're going to say this is the perfect model of the world, our expectations, and then we'll basically see what actually happens in the test and how close is it to the actual expectation. So we're going to go to the home tab, font group, make this black and white, and then we'll center it. And then we're going to roll our die. Things are going to get dicey here. Things are getting dicey. So we'll do this by using our random function again, equals rand brackets or rand between, I should say, between tab. There's our formula. And I'm going to say we want to start at one comma and go up to six. So it's going to give me a random generation of one to six representing a dice rule. So that's just perfect. And then I can copy that down. I'm going to go down to 1001 looking at the, the numbers on the right hand side because one is already taken up to get a thousand rolls. So I'm just going to bring this down to 1001 and note I can do that quite easily uh, in Excel, even though it's quite a ways, quite a lot of rules would be a lot more difficult to do this. in the old days when you actually had to sit at the table and like roll the dice <laughs> a thousand times, right? It'd be a tough, that would be a pretty, pretty cushy job for, uh, for somebody to be the, the dice roller for the experiment. But uh, now we just have, we can just kind of simulate it. And so then if we do that, then uh, this is this is what it's spitting out for the random outcomes. So notice it changes again all the time. So I don't want it to change. I want that to be my generator. And now with the generator, I'm going to copy this whole column, right click and copy and then paste it, but hard code it so that I'm going to say right click and paste just the numbers. So now it's not regenerating every time and my generator is still over there if I want to do it again. So let's go ahead and make this one home tab font group black, white, 
Let's center this thing. And so there are our results. So, so now let's copy the same table from my expected results and then add the actual results in a col another column. So to do that, I'm gonna put my cursor in column Q equals scrolling to the left and just picking up the dice rolls. And then I'll just copy that down. I'll copy everything that's in that table down. Six and then the total. And then I'll copy it to the right as well. And there's the same information that we pulled in from the table. Let's make it, let's format it. I'm gonna to go to the home tab, font group, black, white, uh, wrap it, center it. By the way, you could do it this way too. Let's do it this way, it'll be easier. I could select this entire thing and say, I just want the formatting. So I can go home tab, format painter. Just give me the formatting and then just put that right here, boom. And it pastes the format of it beautifully. Okay, so then let's take our actual rules, actual rules and compare it. And so I'm gonna format paint this one again, home tab, format painter, boom, to get that. And then in order to get the actual rules, what I'd like to do is say, Excel, take everything in this series of numbers and count them if every time you see a one. So we can use our trusty count if function to do that. So this equals count if brackets. I'm gonna go over here, put my cursor in O2, uh, hold down control shift and down on the keyboard taking it all the way down to the bottom. And then we can have control backspace taking me back up to the top. And so I can see the formula. So there it is, closing it up. And uh, we've too few arguments. Count if, I need to finish the argument. <laughs> so comma, what's the criteria? Second condition, number one. So count if in that range, you see a number one, enter. Uh, and then I can copy this down. Now notice this time I didn't put a table over here. Uh, and sometimes I, the tables are useful and sometimes they're not. So I'm gonna try to go back and forth between using the table or not. If I had a table that I was referring to, I wouldn't need to make the cells absolute references. But here, since I don't, I could make them absolute by selecting F4 here and F4 so the range of the table doesn't move. Now note, you can also use spills and arrays. So there's actually multiple ways to do the same things these days, which is really cool, but also confusing. So I'm gonna try to mix in some of that stuff as we go. Uh, so in any case, I'll do that. I'm gonna copy this down, put my cursor on the fill handle, drag it down. So then I should have the same range here, right? It's picking up the same numbers this way and it's counting if there's a six in there so that looks good now i can kind of double check by summing it up and i should still get up to 1000 so that's our double check that my range didn't get uh, skewed or anything like that i could take the difference then difference between what we expected and what actually happened this equals what we expected minus what actually happened i can copy that down double clicking on the fill handle and then down here alt equals that's our keystroke for the sum function enter there there we go with our differences i can go home tab font group uh and format this in the same formatting and then let's make all of this bordered and uh blue and let's put some underlines under here and underline. So there we have it. We can make this a little bit thinner maybe. Can make that a little thinner. I don't really need a space in between these two or this one. We can close that up if we want to. And so then uh, we could make a, a histogram based on what, act, what the actual results are. So there's a couple ways we can do that, right? We could take a histogram of the entire column of results, or since we've summarized the results in essence into buckets over here, we can use our bar chart. So let's use the bar chart. I'm gonna select this column, holding down control and select this column. 
because I want to look at the actual results. And then I'm going to go into the insert tab and we're going to go into the charts and add a bar chart. So there's the bar chart. I'll drag it to the right. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Bring it on over to the right. And so there we have it. So then I'm going to go into my chart here, chart design tab up top, select the data. So once again, I don't want the dice over here. So I'm going to select the dice only and delete it. I'm sorry. Yeah, we don't want the dice. <laughs> And now it deleted the wrong one. Okay, sometimes it gets a little weird, but let's, I'm gonna delete them both and add another one again. And this is gonna be the dice. And then I'm gonna say the column we want is this column. Uh, hold on a sec, I don't want the dice. I'm gonna say <laughs> we want the actual rows and then delete this and say we want this. That's what we want here, okay. And then on this side, I want to make sure that it picks up my actual numbers. So it looks like it's got one to six here, but I want to go here and then pick up these numbers. So that's the X and this is the Y actual rules clicked off. Okay. So there we have it. So I'm going to delete the, this thing down here. And then we have the actual rules and, uh, we could also say if I hit the little plus button, say we want data labels we can add the data labels like we did before and we can compare this uh to to what we had in our you know perfect world summary over here so there we have that now you could also make a histogram from the data from the actual dicey rules that we that we ruled so i could select my data putting my cursor in o2 holding down uh control shift down arrow and then holding down control backspace, going back to the top, insert another histogram, and this time a histogram, not a bar chart. And then I can pull this down. Now the histogram is gonna give us our buckets, which isn't exactly what we want here, because we would like it to number, you know, one to six, but I can kind of adjust those buckets. I can go into these buckets down here and say that I want the buckets, I just want six buckets and then it'll it'll give me something similar right and then i can say okay let's go up top and say that we want this to be our data labels and you can see that we get you know the same data points as we did up top i'm going to delete the chart title actual rules and so there we so there we have that now we could obviously we have something different than than what then you know what we expect like in a perfect world right because we're taking an approximation taking a sample in essence from the population which would be the infinite number of rules so we could also then say well what if we did this multiple times and we can make multiple histograms to see that we'll get a different result each time with this random number generator and if we just played with our random number generator i could say make four of these generators right and then uh uh and and then just copy and paste them four times so for example here's my number generator if i want to simulate us rolling a thousand rules four times i can just copy this entire let's copy this entire column right click and copy and then i'll just bring this over here and say that we did this four times so i'll say right click paste one two three 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 so now we've got four hard-coded rules again this is rules number one rules number two rules number three rules number four so that would be quite long a lot of rolling to do if we were in the good old educational department statistical studies back in the day where we where we had, we had that cushy job of just rolling the die a thousand times four times over uh but they have uh they've eliminated that job now because we can do it this way and the unions tried to stop it uh you know they just like they're like dude what are you doing we need to like this is an important job but then but somehow they couldn't hold out so so then 
we could we can make histograms of the four here and check those out. So if I go from here, holding control shift down, let's do a quick couple histograms and we'll say, uh, and so notice each one of those, even though I copied the same ones are giving me different results, right? Even though I pasted them from the same thing, right? So if I go over here and make and say, I go, let's, oh, hold on a sec. Control shift down, control backspace, and let's just enter four histograms. Insert, charts, histogram, his toe gram. He made a gram of his toe and called it a his toe gram, called it his toe gram. This is his toe gram. All right, what are you talking about? Let's make this, uh, let's go down here and then say number, we want six of these. And so I'm gonna say tab, okay. And so there's that one. Let's put some, some chart titles or data labels on it. Get rid of the chart title. I'm just gonna say roll, well, rolls uh, one. And then we'll just check out what happens on rolls two. Put in my cursor here, control shift down, control backspace, scrolling down a little bit because I want it underneath. Insert chart histogram. And then we'll put that down here. And I'm gonna say, well, let's do the data labels. And then go down here, here, access. We want how many bends? We want six bends. Boom. Close that up. And then I'll put my chart data labels on that one. And this was, this is rolls too. Man, there's a lot of rules. This is getting seriously dicey. This is dicey business. Tell you what. You thought catching fish on the boat, the salmon catcher people had dicey jobs. This day was nothing. Then I'm gonna put my cursor on AD2, control shift down, and then control backspace. And then I'm gonna scroll down a bit. I want this here, insert and charts group, another histogram. And this is for the, the next one. I'm gonna put my cursor down here. And let's say that we want, uh, how many bends do we want? Let's say six bends, close it up, add some chart labels. And this is dice roll. Am I spelling rolls right? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that's how you spell rolls. I think you need two L's on the roll. That's like a roll, like a, like a cinnamon roll. Oh man. People are going to think I'm talking about cooking this whole time. Is that... Oh, I started over. I'm not doing it over just because of this. People know what I'm talking about. People know what I'm talking about. Okay. So let's do one more. And we're going to put our cursor on this one. And control shift down. Uh, control backspace. Scrolling down. Uno vase moss. One more time. Insert charts his toe gram and we're gonna say buckets are gonna be number six tab closing plus button data groups this is rolls for not cinnamon rolls not like baking terms these are dice man these are dice we're in the the gambling house rolling dice all right so you can see the point is that they're different they're different because it's a sample uh but what we would be doing is comparing that then to the to what we would expect in a uniform uh type of distribution and uh uh and that would that would be how we can usually will be generating or approaching certain questions now obviously the uniform distribution the fact that it can be uh, simulated with a line uh, and a formula is quite useful because that gives us the predictive power, right? So even though it's not going to give us a certain prediction in a sample situation, 
uh, the, the fact that we have a, a general concept that we can approximate, like we can approximate the examples here with a line, right? And so that's what we would, uh, and so if we can, and if we can do that, then obviously that helps us for predictive power in the future. Now, when we get into other kind of families of distributions, that's kind of what we're looking for. We're looking for the formulas will get more complex to simulate a line <laughs> uh, through it or a curve. But if we can get a curve that can be approximated with a with some kind of formula, then that would be great because that gives us that's what gives us uh, predictive power to then use that formula.